Okay, guys, I think we're going to get started. I'm sure some other people will trickle in um, as as the, the minutes go on. Um, what I encourage everybody to do is, is type in questions if they come up. Um, feel free to do that. Everyone's muted, but uh, I can see if somebody does ask a question, I can try to address it as they come along. Um, so thank you, everybody, for taking the time to connect with us. Uh, my name is Bill Evans. I'm a senior product specialist with Awareness Technologies. Um, the goal of today is to walk through our InterGuard employee monitoring software, um, you know, kind of an overview, just briefly show what it does, how it works, and, um, and then dive into a few things that are a little bit more recent, um, kind of newer features that we're offering that I think uh, will provide a lot of value to people as well. Um, a lot of you already have the software and are using it now, which is great. So the, the point for you guys would be just to, you know, see some kind of tips and tricks and hopefully be able to get a little bit more value out of it um, than you currently are. And for people that are not yet using it, um, you know, just see what it does and, and how it might uh, help you guys out with your business uh, in terms of, um, you know, your end users and your employees. Um, so again, my name is Bill Evans. Um, hopefully you guys can see my screen. This is a demo account. Um, so it's basically showing, um, you know, example information. None of it's obviously real data. Um, but so to dive in here, um, employee monitoring, you know, there's going to be two main goals of employee monitoring, um, and that's going to be productivity and security. Um, the point of the software is that it's installed on the actual endpoints. Um, at that point, uh, it doesn't matter where the person is whether they're on site at work or whether they're at home or on the road, it's always going to be recording and reporting information back to you. At that point, it is a web-based interface that you can log into from anywhere, really, and you can kind of see, hey, what are my employees up to? Where are they spending time? Um, are they doing things that I should be um, concerned about, uh, et cetera, stuff like that. Um, so we are a cloud-based solution where you do not have to host the data yourself. There is no hardware. There's nothing you have to put in your office specifically um, to run the software. It's very um, lean and easy to install. If you have uh, Active Directory, you can push the licenses out remotely all at the same time. Um, so yeah, super easy to do. Um, but yeah, let's take a look again. For those of you that know, we do have a couple different products. Um, I'm going to be focusing mostly on employee monitoring, which is kind of our uh, our bread and butter, I would say, as far as the, the licenses that we offer. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like when you log into your account. Um, you would really be spending your time in three different places. Settings, which is going to be where you are um, choosing different settings for different people. You can create different groups so that different people have different settings, maybe blocked websites or blocked programs. Um, uh, so that is where you, you choose those settings, turn things on and off. Recorded data which is going to be where all the captured data is displayed. Um, you know, you can view any number of different data points with employee monitoring. It's going to be the bulk of what I'm kind of hovering my mouse over most of this data. Obviously, for mobile, that's kind of a separate space. That would be a separate type of license. So today, we're focusing on the computer-based licenses. And the last one would be dashboard, where you view, um, you know, reports or graphs based on the different data points. Um, you can schedule these graphs or reports to come to you on a regular basis, say weekly or daily. Uh, ultimately, you can even export the data and schedule it so that that information is coming to you, say, once a week so that you, know, you can kind of archi archive that data if you have to. Um, you know, that way you can always look back on it uh, if you need to in the future. So let me just show you quickly what the data looks like. Um, the first one we'll look at is email capture data, which is always... Um, you know, a pretty important one. The software is going to capture both uh, Outlook and then also web-based email, so personal email as well. It's going to show every email that was sent from these accounts. Um, as you can see, it's grouped by something. In this case, it's grouped by date. You already have a date range up here. By clicking on the calendar, you can very easily just change the date range that you're looking at. This is an example account, so although it says 2006, that would never be the case for an active account. Um, but say you wanted to look at the last three days, you could do that. Maybe you want to look at the last two weeks. Maybe you just want to look at one day. So you choose the days, and then it's going to show you data for those days. Um, so grouping it by date here might be redundant. So maybe I want to group it by something different. I want to group it by logon or the different people that are 
producing data in this space so that have sent emails or received an email that they opened. Um, and then maybe I just want to look at John's emails. I can click on John. And then on the right, these are the individual entries. So you can see all of John's emails here. And if I want to look at one, you just click on it. And in the bottom window, you'll see the details of that entry. So in this case, um, you're going to see the entire contents of, of the email, what, what was sent, who did he send it to, what time was it sent, and if it was Outlook, it'll actually show you whether it had an attachment. So you can see by the paperclip that it did. In this case, this is the name of the file. I can even click on the file and open it up in a new window. Um, again, as I mentioned, if they are using webmail, such as Outlook.com or Gmail or Yahoo or Hotmail or whatever it might be, it's still going to capture the entire email and show it to you in the bottom window. Um, you can build out alert words, um, which are basically going to be an ability to say, hey, I want to know when somebody types a specific name or word that's sensitive to you, or uh, maybe it's a job search word or a competitor's name or an internal word that's, that's sensitive to your guy's business. Um, if it comes through in an email, it'll be highlighted, and you can actually sort by any of these columns. So as you can see, these are all alert words that appeared in emails. And maybe I want to sort by alert words that came up. Uh, I can see that Bruce Johnson was mentioned in this email, and I want to look at it, and I can see here that this is what the email um, uh, contained. So um, it's easy to build those lists. Uh, we have a couple pre-built lists for you that I can show you in a few minutes as well. So yeah, very straightforward. Email is definitely going to allow you to see, hey, are they spending time doing their own personal thing, or are they doing work-based activity? Um, I'll just show you a couple data points. I don't want to go too deep into that. I'd rather focus on a couple of the newer things that are important. But um, keystrokes, obviously, always a, an important factor. It's going to be sorted or grouped by the different applications uh, that took place that had keystrokes in them. Uh, as you can see, they're, they're listed here. So this is grouped by application. So maybe I want to see, well, what did somebody type when they were in Notepad? Here are the two entries. When I click on the entry in the bottom, with keystrokes, it's going to show you two things. There's going to be um, you know, uh, a formatted data, which is actually what was entered into the computer, so kind of the final product. And then raw data is literally every button that was pressed um, on, the, on the computer. Um, so it's literally, if you ever had to look back and say, well, hey, well, did they type something and then delete something and then do something else, the raw data will show all of that content. Um, so yeah, keystrokes can be very valuable for um, an investigation of some kind. The important thing to know, and that this does come, a lot, come up a lot, is that ultimately you can turn these, all of these options on or off. If keystrokes is maybe too invasive, um, you can easily turn that feature off and just say, well, for this group of people, we don't need to capture keystrokes. You create a group, you say for them, keystrokes is turned off, all set. You're not recording keystrokes for them. Um, program use, uh, very much like websites, just going to list the different programs that were used. Um, ultimately, you can look into just one person. You can add a filter and say, I just want to look at one of these people, and I want to go across their different data points for just John, maybe. Um, and I can do that by you know highlighting over his name and clicking on John, and then it's just going to show me John's information. Uh, but this is basically telling you when did they open a program, when did they close a program, and how active were they in the program. So it does show you two different types of times. Um, and, and the important thing there is just knowing, well, hey, were they actually doing work? So the active time is actually showing you were they interacting with the program, opening up new windows, et cetera. Um, so there is, there is some value there uh, for sure. Um, and again, if you wanted to sort maybe by active time, top down, click on the column, and I can see this person spent the most time in winword.exe. Hopefully that's based on his job. Um, so yeah, that's what that is. Websites, always a popular one, being able to see where people are spending time on the web. Again, just to reiterate, many people have web filtering solutions in their office already. Maybe it's a firewall, maybe it's through antivirus. Those solutions are not going to be as thorough as the one we have, and there's reasons why. If somebody is at work, those solutions will will usually tend to work. They One, they don't provide very detailed reporting. You can almost never customize a specific report to come to you. But two, if that person is using a laptop, which a lot of people are using now in, in business settings, if they are on the road or if they're at home, it's not going to record that information. 
our software sits on the endpoint, so it doesn't matter if they're at work or if they're on the road or at home. It's always going to be recording and reporting information back to you, um, which, if they're using a company computer, is, is extremely important. Are they going to malicious sites? Maybe you want to block out those malicious sites or sites that can be hazardous, or maybe you just want to see if they're spending time in places that they shouldn't be. You can see where they went to on Facebook. You can see the duration of time they spent there, who was there. And then with web uh, websites, it's going to give you a link to get to that actual website in the bottom window. It'll actually show you ultimately uh, web searches they performed as well. Literally, what did they type in the search bar? Um, so yeah, so that's what the, the the recorded data looks like. Again, I don't want to go too much into detail into to every single one of them. They're all structured in the same way. There's a ton of valuable data there. It's mostly about getting to what is most important to you. Um, so I just want to show you now a couple of the basic um, reporting features. Um, so under dashboard, which is again where you're going to view different graphs or, or um, charts, uh, this first one's called activity. The value in this first uh, kind of chart is what I would call it, is that it's going to show you when people were at their computer. The reason why it's important is, one, if they're remote, you would never know when they're logged in and whether or not they're actually interacting with their computer. What this records is when did they log in, when were websites visited, when did keystrokes take place. So if they didn't type one keystroke in the span of 15 minutes, it will show up as one of these idle time blocks. That's important to know because if they're not in the office, or even if they are in the office, there's no way you can watch them doing their job the entire time. Um, so this will allow you to see, hey, did they literally not type uh, one key for longer than 15 minutes? Maybe it was their lunch break and it makes sense. Maybe it wasn't. Um, and those are things you might want to be able to know. So it does show you, at the end of the day, what this kind of tells you is when did they log in? This person logged in, looks like 3 o'clock. Maybe they were supposed to start at 2, so maybe that's a concern. Uh, when did they take a break, or when was their idle time? And then ultimately, when did they leave at the end of the day? You can look at the different date ranges. You can focus just on a specific data point if you wanted to. This is listed as all activity, which again is good to tell a story of how people, whether or not people are at their computers doing work. Um, and I think that's a new trend, or at least, uh, I mean, it's not a new thing, but certainly is, is a new value of the software in general to be able to tell people, you know, when are my people not working? And I need to know when that's happening and be able to show them that it did happen and then correct it if necessary. Um, so yeah, widgets uh, basically are just a group of graphs that tell you any number of different data points. Um, you can build your own dashboard so that you're looking at only the widgets or graphs that are important to you. You can choose which kind of graph you prefer. Um, I'll show you how many are available to you. All of these on the left are the available widgets, so you can see that there are a lot. These are the chosen ones. Um, the cool thing about these graphs is that they are all interactive, so time spent web surfing. Over these dates, these are, this is the number of minutes that was spent web surfing by my four employees. Maybe I want to see, well, one of them is spending a lot more time than anybody else on web surfing. So I can hover over these triangles and say, who makes up this data point? So 62 minutes was John. Okay, well, John's web surfing more than what anybody else. I need to know what he's doing specifically. I can double click on it. It will then drill down into the details. In this case, it would go to recorded data, websites, and then specifically take me to John's website history for that date range. I can then you know, sort by duration if I wanted to to see like where was the most time spent if I wanted to do that. You can see that John's spending a lot of time in Hotmail. Maybe that's a concern. Um, and then lastly, reports. I mean, there are really an unlimited number of custom reports that you can build. Um, they are, uh, the, the, to me, the value of the software is to have it working for you and to build some of these reports so that you don't have to be logging in all the time to have an idea of what's happening. Um, I think that happens both with notifications and with reports. Um, notifications, obviously, more of a, hey, when it happens, I want to know about it. Reports, more of a, I'm managing this group of people. These are important data points to me. I want to know this data at the end of every day. Schedule that report to come to you, whether it's all websites visited or it's um, you know a complete overview of what one person did throughout the course of a day, um, and then 
open up those files. They come to you through email as an attachment. It's very easy to look at. Um, so to build one, basically just click on the add. Um, the preset reports are basically just a um, group of reports that are uh, you know the different widgets that we just looked at so that would be a an email that comes to you with any number of those graphs that we just looked at so again maybe the time spent web surfing one's important to me I can set it up as a pie chart and I'm going to name it daily time spent web surfing chart then I'm going to go through and choose who who is it covering how often do I get it um, you know the file type I'll just quickly show you this time spent web surfing report you can see you're basically just following this step by step. It really couldn't be easier. You're choosing either everybody. Maybe it's just one group of people. Maybe it's just one person. You can do any of the above. How often do you want to receive it? Either daily or weekly is always usually the most efficient. Hourly tends to be a lot of emails that you receive, so I usually recommend one of these two. We're doing daily for this one. It's going to come uh, basically in the middle of the night, around 2 a.m., um, so you should get those to start each day with information on the, on the, the pre previous day. So it's going to give you kind of like, hey, what did people do yesterday? You can choose the type of file. So this is a graphical-based report because those are graphs, so I would choose a PDF file for that. Whenever you're exporting a group of data or you're setting, building a detailed report of some kind, I'd usually recommend doing an Excel spreadsheet because there's just more information. It's easier to manage through an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, but again, this one's graphical, so PDF would be the way to go. Um, you add your email. And then you're set to go. We say next, finish, and then that report is built and scheduled to come to you on a daily basis. You can have multiple recipients of these reports. Um, you can have, um, you know, different managers or directors of a specific group get a report on their specific group only so that it's just relevant data for them. They don't even need to have access to this software to receive these reports. And I think that's really um, the value that I think a lot of people don't always get and, and should focus on because, you know, this information is literally invaluable. I mean, it's the telling you how people are spending their time. There's no way one person can know how everybody is spending their time, especially when you have maybe multiple branches or multiple offices where you cover a very large number of people. So getting this information to you and, and so that you can turn it into an understanding of how people are spending their time and ultimately take action from that is the value. Um, so that's what we're, we're trying to help you do. Um, and then exports, again, same exact kind of thing, uh, just being able to export any or all of the data to come to you on a, say, daily or weekly basis, and then being able to save those um, files or an Excel spreadsheet like I recommended um, over time so that you can always look back on the data if you had to. Um, so, yeah, so that's the um, kind of the, the overview of what employee monitoring does. Um, you know, when you think about the amount of time wasting that goes on in a job when people have computers, it's usually very substantial. If you think about paying for one of these licenses, at, at you know, if you're buying anything more than one, usually like 10 or more licenses at about $100 a license, um, when you think about what you're paying people per hour, if you're paying them in the ballpark of $20 an hour, um, then if you're saving five hours of time wasting uh, in the course of however long you want to view it, usually you can save at least an hour of time wasting a day, um, I would assume, if they know, one, if they know they're being monitored, two, if they don't, and you see these things are happening. Um, so say you, you save an hour of time wasting a day, um, in the course of a week, five days, you've saved $100, you've paid for that license. You have the software for 52 weeks. So that's your return on investment, if you think of it that way. 52 to 1 is pretty pretty substantial. So um, certainly it pays for itself very quickly. And then the security side, knowing what people are doing, whether they're touching files they shouldn't be, whether they are um, you know, going in places they shouldn't be, communicating with people they shouldn't be, that's really an added bonus in a lot of ways. When you think about the cost associated with that, it's almost unlimited. I mean, the amount of liability that can happen from somebody taking a client list or somebody um, 
you know, speaking with competitors or whatever it might be, you have to know about those things. So um, that can be extremely cost, um, you know, I mean, that can impact the business to an, a, a very high amount. So anyway, those are the two kind of spear points that I think uh, the software really helps with. Um, something I want to show everybody that's relatively new um, that we've recently released is a user behavior report. You build it under dashboard reports. You add a report. You go to custom reports. It is the most recent report that we've added here. It's called a daily user behavior report. What it does is it um, it basically tracks everybody's activity and it gives it a number. You're choosing the different types of activity that you're including on there and the point of it is to say how many keystrokes are all of my users pressing throughout the course of a day. I want to know the average because I have maybe 50 people or maybe I only have 10 people or maybe I have 5 people. I want to know what the average number of keystrokes everybody presses. I want to know where my people stack up compared to that average. Maybe keystrokes is a great indicator of how active somebody is. Um, at the end of the day, your businesses will have to determine whether or not that's important to you. The point of the report is that you can choose what's important to you and what's not. Maybe sent web mails is important to you. The, num the average number of sent web mails is three. Um, you know, I see one person has sent 12. I'm concerned, why is somebody sending so many more web mails than anybody else? To give you an idea of what it looks like, hopefully you can see on my screen the new report. This is an example. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Um, again, this is a, uh, a snapshot of uh, any number of data points, so email data. This is email emails that contain alert words. So I built my alert word list, and I want to know how many emails went out that had one of those alert words. I can see that the average is six. John seems to have sent 12. Maybe I want to look at those emails. Why is he sending twice as many as anybody else? Sent and received emails per day. Maybe email is a big part of their job. The average is 58. John's sending twice as many. Maybe some of those are webmails and I'm concerned about that. Maybe none of them are and he's just doing his job very well. Webmail sent per day, as I mentioned, that might be a concern. You get the average, the high, the low, and each individual person's numbers. This is allowing you to see how people are spending their day specifically, broken down to, to, to actual numbers. How do they stack up compared to the other users? The point of this is to be able to identify an anomaly. Who stands out from the norm, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, IMs, I can see that John is having many more IMs than anybody else. I, maybe I want to look into that. Maybe he's just very busy and he's a model employee. Maybe he's talking with recruiters and coworkers and uh, you know um, competitors, and maybe I need to be aware of that. That's important stuff. Keystrokes, as I mentioned, the average and each individual person's number. Keystrokes contain, containing alert words. How many alert word screenshots were taken? Um, how many websites were visited per day? That can be a very valuable one website searches, so you guys get the idea. The point of this is to allow you to compare your users. You can do it on a group of users, you can do it on all of your users. It's, it, it's, it's up to you. You choose those, both the categories and the people involved. Um, so that is the point of this report. I think it's a very valuable um, piece of information um, and certainly will allow you to kind of better understand how do people stack up against each other? And is there something that I need to be aware of that, that's a concern? Um, I've talked a lot about alert words. Just to show you guys how you set those up, it's really easy. Settings, alert words. You see that you can create different categories. These are just examples. Um, maybe executive names is the one that you want to build. As I can see here, uh, this is the um, group or the, the category, I should say, this is the category first, and then you add words to that category. First you add the category, then you add words to that category. That's as easy as it is. We have some pre-built lists for, say, inappropriate words, job search words, data security words, 
those are basically CSV files. You can upload them straight into this um, category. You see that you can add a word to the category. I can send you those files if you want them. You can email me right after this and say that you want them. I can send them to you. Um, or you build your own list that's much more specific to your business. Click to upload file, choose file, etc. If it's a specific word, you're just um, typing in the word. Uh, we do have regex as well, regular expression. So if something that could be a credit card number or a social security number, we have those as well. Um, so those might be important to you too. Um, so that's basically how you would um, build out alert words. And again, with alert words, you can either have them uh, take a screenshot as soon as one of those alert words appears or you can just build them and then gather some of that data through, say, emails or through that user uh, behavior report that shows you how many alert words appeared through emails or how many alert words appeared through keystrokes, who's typing the most, which ones are they, et cetera. Notifications, um, this is also um, something that's extremely important. As I just mentioned, alert word category, maybe I want to be notified the second when somebody types one of those words. Again, this is under settings, notifications, alert word category, alert word immediate. Maybe that's what I want it to come through. This is going to email you as soon as somebody types one of those alert words. It's going to show you in the email the details of what was typed. Here's why it was triggered. Here's what was typed. Here's who typed it. Here's when it happened. Um, you're choosing the category. You're choosing how often you want to receive it. Maybe it's just at the end of the day. I usually recommend for these to do it immediately so that it's actually a real notification. Hey, as soon as this happens, I want to know. Maybe you need to take action immediately. If that's not important, maybe you just need to build a report and have it come to you on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Who is it covering? Maybe it's everybody. Uh, this is where you would add your email address. Again, you can have multiple recipients of this, maybe you and your manager so that somebody on the ground can take action if necessary. Um, and then you'd finish it and it would show up. You can easily turn these notifications on or off. Another notification that is new that for those of you that have the software already, this is a um, only a feature of Sonar Enterprise and I'm going to talk about that in a second. That's also a recent um, addition to a regular sonar license that adds a lot of value. It's not extremely expensive. It gives you some very important data on the security side, basically file tracking. Um, to give you an idea, this kind of ties in two things, both obviously the enterprise license, which is an add-on again to the employee monitoring license. Um, this goes between that and then also the user behavior report that we talked about. So you build those user behavior reports, you get them on a daily basis. Maybe you want to know when somebody has only typed X number of keystrokes um, throughout the course of a day. And, or as soon as they've sent X number of webmails, I want to get notified. We've included those notifications. The user behavior report that I showed you is part of a regular Sonar employee monitor license. Everybody has the ability to, to access that. If you have Sonar Enterprise, you can also build a notification for it as well. So we will just show you what that looks like. I'm going to add a new setting when, and it's basically choosing numbers and that you're determining what's important to you. Maybe I want to know about blocked websites visited per day. Tell me when more than five blocked websites were visited per day for a specific person or a group of people. That could be very valuable. Maybe I want to know when um, emails that contain the following alert word, more than two of them were sent per day. Maybe I wanted to know about John. He seems to be sending a lot, and I want to know whenever he sends one for top secret. So again, you create these settings. This is a daily notification. Um, basically, it's gathering the data from a given day, but as soon as that number is hit, it's going to let you know. Um, you're choosing who it's covering. You add your email, and you're going to have that notification built in. Getting back to enterprise uh, license, the enterprise add-on, again, file tracking, which is, again, an add-on to employee monitoring. 
It's 10% of the license cost. It's not an expensive add-on. It does give you a lot of value. I just want to talk about what it does because that's also, within the last year, a newer feature. What it does, basically, is it gives you file tracking. That is, whenever a file has been added, deleted, renamed, or modified anywhere on the computer. It does that uh, on the USB drive. It does that on online Dropbox. And it does that anywhere on the computer. You just have to specify the file path. So you can say, hey, on this person's computer, C drive, backslash, my documents, backslash, client list. I want to know anytime somebody goes in there, adds a file in there, deletes a file off of there, modifies some file in there of some kind. Maybe it's something they shouldn't be touching. I want to know anytime they add a file to their USB drive. It will automatically tell you that. It's not stopping these things from happening, but it is telling you that they did happen and then the, and the name of the file, when it happened, and who was involved with it. Um, it's huge for data security. We have another license called DataLock that kind of takes that one step further and allows you to build policies where you can block those same types of files or file content from leaving the computer. That's a different license. Um, this is an add-on to employee monitoring. Again, it's file tracking. It's telling you when these things have happened. Um, and to give you an idea of what it looks like, just like all the other recorded data points, it's grouped by something. So in this case, it's date. We can maybe change that to device or computer names. Uh, I want to know what file uh, uh, tracking events took place on Joe's computer. You can see that there was two. Um, he renamed a file. And I can see that he renamed this file, original file name here, to this file name here telling me that it happened, maybe that's not a big deal. Maybe he renamed the file and then he's going to upload it into his you know, USB drive or something. So it allows you to know that that happened. Um, other things that enterprise feature or the enterprise license gives you. File tracking, it gives you that ability to create notifications off of user behavior reports. And it allows you to see if webmails went out with attached files. Right now, you're already seeing the content of all emails that were sent out, webmail or Outlook. With Outlook, you are seeing whether there was an attachment, you're seeing the name of that file. The regular Sonar license doesn't tell you if a webmail went out with an attachment. We've recently built in that functionality. It's part of file tracking now. If you have the enterprise license, you can see if a webmail went out with an attachment, and also, of course, what the name of that file is company social security numbers. That might be a concern. So you're going to want to look into that one. Um, the idea here, though, is, of course, when people are taking information from a company, personal email is going to be a very common place where it happens. Uh, so be having some visibility into that is extremely important. There is nobody else that can give you this data point in the monitoring space. Uh, this is a, a very new space, uh, even, that we've been able to cover. I think it's extremely valuable and, and, and uh, you know, in terms of data security, very important. Um, so yeah, so that's what the enterprise license can do. It gives you a little bit advanced reporting slash notifications. Um, it gives you visibility into webmail attachments. It tells you what files are moving around the computer, whether it's USB, online Dropbox, or anywhere on the computer if you specify the file path. Um, to specify the file path under settings, recording and blocking, which is, again, where you turn all of these things on or off. Um, again, this is where you're building groups and saying different settings for different people. Here are all of your recorded data points, turning them on or off as needed. As you can see under record file tracking, it has its own settings feature. Click on that, and this is where you add a file path. You can add a network file path if you had to. So if it's something's on the network drive, and you want to know if somebody pops on there and grabs a client list, you can include network file paths or folder paths uh, in this list. You will have visibility into that. Um, again, uh, as, as far as all the rest of the information here, this is um, very easy to turn any of these data points on or off. With blocking websites, I think most people probably know, but it's very straightforward. You can choose by group, um, as you can see here. You can always whitelist and say, I want to block everything except for the following allowed websites. Uh, but the number of categories is uh, extremely long. You have malicious, 
you have inappropriate, you have sports, gambling, employment, job search, all of those. Um, so yeah, that's basically um, how enterprise kind of impacts um, you know, a lot of the things that people are interested in right now. That's why we allowed it. If you guys are interested in that and you don't have it, please reach out to me. We can talk about what that would look like. It's not an all or nothing thing. You don't need to have it for every single one of your um, licenses. You can add it to just one person you're concerned with, 10 people out of 50. You can add it to all of them if you wanted. And, uh, and again, not an extreme cost as far as the value that you're getting. Um, the last piece I want to show you that might be new since some of you bought the software um, or if you're interested in it, just to give you an idea of what uh, a, a new thing that's, that's pretty cool, to click on what's called activity log, which when you log in, just to do this again, this is your home page. Um, you can see kind of quick, uh, quick jump uh, tabs here. The second one is activity log. If I click on activity log, it's basically giving me a rundown of the most recent activity that's been happening. You can choose the date range. It's already going to show you basically the last three days unless you change it. You can sort by device, maybe just look at one person, maybe leave it as all people. You can look at just one person uh, that's a user and maybe they use multiple computers and I want to see everything they did on any number of computers, you can choose the user. Maybe I just want to look at one data type. I want to know what websites people are going to and then you can refresh. To give you an idea of what it looks like, as you can see here, you can easily scroll down and say, hey, recently, looks like John did some keystrokes, here's what they were. Looks like John sent an email, here's what it was. Um, looks like a screenshot was captured on John's computer, maybe I want to see what that is, you can click on the camera, it's going to show you immediately what that screenshot is. Um, you know, maybe this is important to me, maybe it's not. Um, again, any screenshots are going to allow you to view from this actual interface. You're always going to see an immediate um, uh, kind of clip of what that email is for and so on. Basically, it's just a way to quickly log in and say, hey, I want to know quickly what's going on. Is there anything that, that doesn't look right or that I should be concerned about? Um, if everything looks fine, all good. If something looks concerning, maybe I want to drill into the details. Looks like John maybe did something through email that I'm concerned about. I want to go up to recorded data emails and I want to look at John's information and see what emails were sent. So those are just a few of the things, again, that are, that are kind of recent that I think provide a lot of value. Um, again, to me, the value of the software is to build some of these alert words notifications, be aware of what is already built, build a daily user behavior report, build a weekly user review or one of those widgets to come to you, get this stuff automated so that this information comes to you on a daily or weekly basis um, so that you don't even have to log in to get an idea of what's happening. I think that's the real value in the software um, because it's information that's, again, extremely invaluable. Uh, it's, it's just, it couldn't be more important. And so if you have it at your fingertips, it's just getting it to the right people so that they can take action if necessary. So that's, that's it for today. Again, the, the idea was just to show you guys some recent things. If you have the software already, make sure you're utilizing it as best as possible. If any of you want to walk through any of these specifics together, um, you have my email address, you can email me, we can schedule a time to walk through it through your account specifically, make sure some of these reports slash notifications are set up. If you want to talk about the file tracking event, or if I'm sorry, file tracking license, the enterprise license, and you don't have it and you're interested, reach out to me, we can talk about what that would look like. Um, I can get that up and running for you, not a problem. If you don't have the software and you're interested in talking about it, uh, want to know what it would look like, um, email me, give me a call directly. Um, uh, we can certainly um, walk through any portion of that together. I'm happy to do that. So, yeah, I will thank you guys again for taking the time. My name is Bill Evans, and please reach out to me. You guys have my email address. My direct number is 203-307-2941. You can get me anytime throughout the day. And uh, thanks again for taking the time to walk through this. I appreciate it, and hope to talk to you guys all soon. I don't see any questions um, through the chat, so... Um, yeah, please reach out to me directly if you guys do have any follow-up questions that I can help with. Okay, thanks guys.
Talk to you soon. Bye.